Welcome to lesson number 11, titled Longing for God in Zion. It's ready for teaching on March 16 and is from the Sabbath School lesson series Psalms, authored by Dr. Dragoslava Sandrak and read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sabbath afternoon, March 9. Before we start, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the nuances we gain from the study of the book of Psalms. We thank you for the messages that are there that tell us of your greatness, your love, your grace, and your power. And this week, as we study this week's lesson, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us because each of us longs to be in the courts of the Lord. And Lord, we cry out today for the Holy Spirit to guide us and bless us as we open your word. Today, I'd like to pray for families uh, and particularly for Nix's niece and son and uh, Sunshine's and her family and Doreen Hines and family and Hazel and Balliston and family and Nasus Seneva and his brother and Victor Kelly of Kenya and family and all of our families. Lord, we each represent a family in one way or another. And I pray that in our understanding of your love and your grace, that we may share your word with those we meet out in the community, but more so with our families. Bless us, we pray, as we open your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our memory text this week is Psalm 84 and verse 2. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Let's read that again, Psalm 84 verse 2. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. The songs of Zion are joyous hymns that magnify the beauty of Zion and the sovereignty of the Lord who reigns from his holy mountain. These psalms often praise the merits of the Lord's house and express a love for the sanctuary that can be found in other psalms as well. Many of these psalms were composed by the sons of Korah, who had first-hand experience of the blessedness of the Lord's house as the temple musicians, as we read in First Chronicles chapter 6, verses 31 to 38. Now, these are the men whom David appointed over the service of song in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest. They were ministering with music before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of meeting until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and they served in their office according to their order. And these are the ones who ministered with their sons. Of the sons of Kohathites were Heman, the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elil, the son of Toah, the son of Zaph, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Asur, the son of Abishaph, the son of Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And they were the keepers of the temple's gates, as we read in First Chronicles 9, verse 19. Shalom, the son of Korah, the son of Abisaph, the son of Korah, and his brethren from his father's house, the Korahites, were in charge of the work of the service, gatekeepers of the temple, tabernacle. Their fathers had been keepers of the entrance to the camp of the Lord. What makes Zion the source of hope and joy? Zion represented God's living presence among his people. As the people of Israel are God's chosen people, as we read in Deuteronomy 7 verse 6, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. So, Zion is God's chosen mountain, as we read in Psalm 78, verse 68, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. 
And Psalm 87 verse 2, The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. God reigns from Zion, we read in Psalm 99 verses 1 and 2, The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He dwells between the cherubim, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion and he is high above all the peoples. And he's founded his temple on Zion as well, as we read in Psalm 87 verse 1. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Thus, Zion is a place of divine blessings and refuge. Zion is often referred to in parallel or even interchangeably with Jerusalem and the sanctuary, the centre of God's work of salvation for the ancient world. The blessings of Zion overflow to the ends of the earth because the Lord's person and grace exceed the boundaries of any holy place. Zion is the joy of all the earth. We read in Psalm 48 verse 2, Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king, and affirming that the whole earth belongs to God. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.